All right, this is the uh, Linksys uh, SPA 942. This is uh, probably one of the first phones I ever started uh, tinkering around with when I started learning VoIP, and uh, it's uh, one of the few that actually have failed over the years. So this one, the uh, the main problem with is that after you configure it. Uh, Sometimes a short period, sometimes a few hours, it becomes basically unresponsive. It still gets powered on, but the service uh, no longer works. It doesn't remain registered. But um, rather than just tearing this apart, uh, I wanted to tell a little story about how I got into into VoIP. And uh, initially, uh, I was doing straight IT networking, and uh, there was a point where. Um, where some customers were really, you know, just asking about, you know, about VoIP, and I really didn't know anything about it. So, along with a colleague of mine, uh, we we started looking into it, and we we wanted to find a system that catered to small business. And so we we found a few systems, but a lot of them were still aimed at the traditional telecom, where you know, if you were in that industry, here here's a new box that's smaller, but Basically, it works the same way, you know, the, the same way as providing the phone through standard, you know, uh, phone cabling, not Cat 5e, and it would be, you know, a small model that you you basically manage just like the uh, existing Nortel systems, and it, that didn't seem appealing because, you know, it would it required us to become more telecom guys and, or telephone guys and IT guys and and. One of the systems we saw was the uh, Lexus LVS 9000, and that was actually the opposite. It uh, it was a system that allows us to provide, uh, you know, standard you know phone features, but everything felt like you know uh, standard IT. You know, the VoIP phones it worked off uh, Cat 5e cabling, power over Ethernet. The way you configured the uh, the the, the system was through a web interface similar to how you configured routers and switches you didn't need a, a special program to install on your laptop and then co connect by a console so you know it, it all seemed you know perfect for what we were looking for so we, we got uh, a system to you know learn off and you know try things out and uh, it all looked pretty good it, it was something that uh, you know it didn't cost a lot of money and you know you could start off with a couple of phones and you could expand it and it provided all your standard features plus you could uh, set it up in a in an environment where even if you didn't have internet you could still provide standard phone service through a analog gateway which is something that was included as an optional item that you can purchase um, so it seemed to solve a lot of problems and uh, so you know we, 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 we learned the system and you know we offered this and it got installed in a few places but the, what we learned after was that it wasn't very reliable it, and it wasn't very very good at, uh, at doing just you know acting as a phone system everybody was accustomed to once a phone system got installed that it actually just work and the LVS 9000 was just not very good. I mean, there's there's no way around it. It was just it, it, the features seemed to look, but after a while, it didn't it didn't matter how many calls you made or didn't make. And you know, eventually, the the thing would just fail. You had to reboot it and or tell the client to reboot it. And it just wasn't something you wanted to keep telling over and over again. So we looked at you know ways out of that uh, for, for the installations that we did and just by accident I went to a Linux conference and um, in one of the booths there was a uh, some guys with a, a compact Evo and um, and a variety of phones I think including uh, one of these and what I was surprised was that you know these phones could connect basically to any kind of uh, VoIP system as long as it was a SIP standard. So installed on their box was Asterix server and this phone basically worked out of the box no problem with it. 
So I went back to my colleague and said, hey, you know, there's a way out of this. We can just replace them with the asterisk boxes or, you know, uh, another compatible system. We could keep most of the, uh, most of the equipment, including the analog gateways. There was a way of connecting those with asterisks as well. So we, we fixed the, you know, what, what few installations we did. But moving forward, it was basically asterisks and these phones along with, you know, maybe some polycoms or, you know, we, we tried a few different brands, but this was the key. This, this phone basically provided all the features that we needed. The configuration wasn't too difficult and it just worked most of the times. Now there, there was some problems. Um, the, uh, the speaker sound quality, it, it wasn't so great. I think they improved it with the, uh, with the line that uh, Cisco basically uh, updated afterwards after uh, acquiring Linksys. This also goes back prior to Linksys. Linksys picked up a company called Supra, which originally uh, had these phones. Different casings though, they didn't have the same look. So they, ha they have a more modern look with the Linksys uh, acquisition. So prior to that, uh, they didn't look like this. I think they were just standard black and they they look like standard Chinese phones basically it, it, it wasn't very good these look more like Cisco and you know they they look more modern the, the look still the uh, look of these still stands today it's uh, still looks modern and a lot of these are still functioning um, so I'm very happy with this phone so let me just go over some of the, the key things so the display is a nice size the uh, you have a good amount of line keys. You can configure up to four line keys. And all the functions are, are basically available from here. Uh, easy menu access to a lot of things. Volume adjust, um, hold button, um, mute, speaker. So, you know, a lot of features uh, at the time for, you know, a phone that really didn't cost a lot. You know, there were some innovative things, um, like what we did with the phones that weren't being used. Is one of the things that if you're not using PoE is that these AC adapters can get lost very easily. So here you can actually detach with the uh, standard Linksys or Cisco adapters. These things come off and you can easily put everything in here and, ba and basically pack up everything and not lose your AC adapter. So th that was one of the really good things. What this was meant for, there's um, a wireless adapter that actually fits in here and uh, connects to the back and uh, it actually made this phone become wireless. I don't think that was too popular but that's the main feature uh, for like putting something in here, not the AC adapter, but uh, that's what I used it for. So since this isn't working, I'm just going to open it up and so we can see what's actually inside. See, it's a little more difficult to do from that angle. Alright, let's pop this open.
some reason this one's a little deeper than all the other ones, which is odd. They're all the same size, just happens to be for some reason a little more difficult to get out. But I think that's it. Let's see. Alright. So let's get a good look here. So it looks like it's all nicely laid out. Uh, if you look at the uh, the Grand Stream uh, video that I opened up, uh, it doesn't look as nice as this one. It looks like this one's a much better design, and you know, it it does look like better quality. I say that uh, we'd compare them, and uh, just right off the bat, you know, you can tell that this um, a lot more thought in the manufacturing process looks like it was a lot better. So you can see that it's a it's a much better. Um, phone overall. Uh, now I don't know why it failed. That I, I can't do board level diagnostics to figure out exactly what part failed. But uh, I don't see anything leaking. I don't see anything that might have any kind of heat sink on it. So that's as far as I can go with these things. It just uh, it might be something simple, but uh, you know. I don't do board level diagnostics, so, and it's probably not worth it to do that kind of work on these phones, but it just doesn't work anymore, so opening it up and seeing what's inside is no harm, really. Uh, it's just going to go into trash, so here's how it looks. Again, back. So there's not much to this. If you want to open it up uh, and try and fix one of these might be able to swap a few parts from a few bad ones and maybe the right combination will fix the phone but otherwise it looks like a nice little circuit board so I'm wondering if you could actually replace the uh, speaker and put in a, a bigger one and uh, get a better speaker uh, phone quality so that might be an idea but that's it for this video